The night was very bad as Janet started on her way home. She had been to a party at a friend's house and had not realized how bad the weather had become. As she started to leave, Debbie called out to her and suggested that she stay all night, but Janet, realizing that her father would need the car and that her family would be worried, decided to go on. After she started the car and turned down the lane, she realized how hazardous the road was and wondered if she should have stayed after all. To take her mind off her worries, she turned on the radio. The radio started blasting out the rhythm of her favorite song, and this soothed her nerves. All at once, the music stopped and the announcer warned of road conditions. Snow has blocked all the roads to Beelington. Roads will not be open until morning, the announcer warned. And as Janet heard this, she became more alarmed than ever. She made a hasty decision and started back. As she neared the turnoff to Debbie's house, she realized that the snow had drifted too high to drive the car through. Not realizing the danger of such a course, she decided to park the car and walk three quarters of a mile back to Debbie's. Janet had walked for an hour and still didn't see the lights of her friend's house. She knew by now that she was lost, hopelessly wandering around in the forest. She was frightened, but tried to keep her head clear. She began to feel the cold. Her fingers were getting numb, and she was weary from walking. As she sat down by a huge maple tree, she could feel the warmth of her body start to leave. She was exhausted, but she knew if she went to sleep, she would never awaken. Nevertheless, she seemed to lose control of her senses and dozed off. Then all at once she stirred as the figure of a man seemed to pass her. She tried to jump up. It was a person. She was saved. She called the stranger to her. Janet was unable to walk, and in order for the man to get her to a nearby house, he carried her. He was a man in his late fifties and had a huge beard. But there was something odd about him, she realized. He was wearing summer clothing and was still warm. When the man reached the door with Janet, he laid her down on the step and knocked. In her half-consciousness, she didn't realize that the man had brought her to her friend Debbie's house. When Debbie heard the knock and went to the door, she saw her friend laying half-frozen on the steps. With some difficulty, she got her to the fireplace. As Janet began to warm, she came to her senses. She told Debbie everything that had happened and finished her story by telling of the man who had saved her life. She even told of his being dressed in summer clothes and seeming not to feel the cold. As Debbie heard this, she gasped and said that the man was her great-grandfather. He was believed to have been killed in the very section of the woods in which Janet had seen him. Seventy years before, 